Coach Hargett? Yes, sir. Well, this is our sixth foray into, uh, into YouTube Live. And, and I think a lot of people, we've had about 700 hits on this thing, and people are learning some good stuff, man. So I appreciate your time, brother. Well, six times a charm. This one's going a little more, more seamless here. Well, well, as I say, we're still rookies. I'm going to let everybody know we're not going to be able to do a live chat because um, I – Coach Hargett, see, I told you, because I hadn't figured that one out yet, okay? That's all right. So um, yeah. as long as we're live, welcome to Surface to Air System. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And you can get live notifications. Uh, it's actually on Coaching Process Wins. So if you type in Coaching Process Wins, that's where our YouTube channel is. And Coach Hargett will come here every so often and do a little live. And uh, uh, I think we got something good to talk about, Coach, because we've had a conversation or two this week with other coaches from different places, particularly one in Nebraska, uh, that really want to utilize a tight end, maybe have some 11 personnel, uh, want to take advantage of a lanky kid that can catch and block and uh, uh, talk a little bit about that and then let's detail it on film. Well, you know, <clears throat> right now I'm in South Carolina. I'm, I'm making the transition to Idaho here soon. But one of the things that people in the ACC and the SEC, when they come around on their college recruiting trips right now, one of the things we talk about is defenses have gotten so good that the days of just standing there in two by two and three by one over and over and over again, that stuff's cashed out. You have to be able to use the tight end. But I feel like the days of inline tight ends are somewhat numbered as well, because if you're an inline tight end, there's a limited amount of things you can do. Okay. You can go to the flat, you can go up the seam, you can block the guy in front of you, you can block down. That's about all you can do. If you're a sniffer, you can do all those things, but you can cross the formation. So you can pop pass, you can run an arrow route, you can split zone in front of you, you can load option in front of you, you can split away, you can load option away, you can arrow away, you can pap away, you can pap to, on and on and on and on. There's so many different options. And so I think that the sniffer is part of what we call in the surface to air system, it's part of how you change your surface. And changing your surface is what makes it hard for defenses to relate to gap integrity. And all DCs talk about that, right? Gap integrity is their big buzzword of the week. The tight end makes that very difficult. And you change where those gaps are and how they relate to one another makes it much harder on that DC to get a feel for what you're doing. That's, uh, that's good stuff, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of people think, you know, there's like eight gaps. You insert somebody like a fullback, uh, there's actually a ninth gap, depending on what formation you're in. And uh, it always makes the defense half a man down. Uh, where you don't have a hat for a back. Is that basically what you're saying in my, yep. in my rudimentary view there? Absolutely. Yep. Let's, let's, get to the, let's get to the play. All right, see that, so, you see that there, Coacher? I do. Yeah, we're, uh, this is from uh, 2016, so obviously we're in the blue. Um, we're playing the team that wins our region. Uh, this is a pretty good school. I think they won 30 – 30 plus games in three years. They were a 10 win, a regular season average team. Um, they won our region this year. We lost in a shootout to them. Um, but they're a really, really good football team, really well coached, a lot of division one talent. So it gives you an idea of what you're seeing here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run inside zone down here to the boundary. And you can see the sniffer. I have people ask me all the time, they're like, well, what do you do if you don't have true 11 personnel? And I said, I tell people all the time, I said, we're going to be an 11 personnel team all the time okay but we're going to do it whether we have a tight end or not now the guy i'm going to have next year as a tight end is six five and weighs 200 pounds he's a true tight end guy the guy i had this year that dude is probably five seven five eight maybe about 165 170 pounds it doesn't matter i'm adding a gap i'm adding a, a spot on the field that is hard for the defense to relate to so it doesn't matter what that guy's height and weight and all that other stuff is to me that that stuff quit mattering about five or six years ago so what we're going to do here is we're going to run fade flat with the two receivers up top. Um, and so we're going to give them that little what I call a stick concept to keep that corner safety and outside back or what we would call the R1, the R2, and the R3, that triangle, we're going to keep those three busy. So we're going to basically just take them out of the equation. And then we're going to run a pop pass with that sniffer. And we're going to read the first linebacker back in the box, the first second level guy. So he's right there next to the official. And we're going to make this really, really simple. Okay, if he fills and plays the box, we're going to throw the pop. 
if he plays the pop, we're going to hand the ball off because that's a half a man advantage in the box. So we'll go ahead and play it through here. Um, you can see the five technique is free. It doesn't matter if he's free because the ball is going to come out so quick. Okay, that linebacker, that uh, what I would call the right Mike, okay, if you watch him at the snap of the ball, he is clearly a downhill player. He is coming down to play run, okay, and the ball is just going to replace him. All right, so to me, that's about the easiest way to play football possible. Okay, right now the quarterback's made the decision. Okay, that sniffer is really at the line of scrimmage and the quarterback's already ready to go ahead and get that ball out. So pressure is almost irrelevant. It doesn't matter who you block and who you don't right there because look how quickly that ball's coming out. Okay, I can't really see the down marker very clearly. It looks like it's first and 10 at, uh, I guess, about our 44-yard line. Quarterback's going to make, what, a five-yard pass right here to a pretty good athlete in space, and that's going to be a – 12, 13, 14, 15, almost 16 yard gain on first and 10. And we're going to put it down on their 40. So very simple stuff. All right. The next clip, still 2016. Uh, this team actually, I believe, beat the other team in the playoffs. So they were, I think, a 10 or 11 win team as well. So you're looking at some clips from some, some pretty good dudes here in South Carolina. These guys can play. All right, so here we're going to have a bubble screen by the two outside receivers down here. We're going to hold the flat uh, very quickly. These guys had a lot of team speed, so we didn't want to deal with down the field routes. And then we'll run the pop pass uh, again from the sniffer. All right, so we'll go ahead and play that one. Okay, this time we're locking it. Okay, you can see there we're going to lock that defensive end. We're doing that because we want to try to keep that really fast track athlete defensive end they've got off our quarterback. The guy we're reading is the guy covering up the sniffer. They're basically playing press man on a sniffer. Well, the problem is we tell our sniffer to outside release and then go back inside to get his angle. So he was probably going to win either way, but their guy decides he's going to come out and take the bubble. I'm not quite sure why they do that coverage-wise. If it was trips, that would have been really simple for them, okay? But because it's sniffer trips, it's a little bit harder to distinguish. So, again, the quarterback can just get that thing off his hand right now and get it out. Uh, and I know we're not watching it absolutely in real time on video, but if you count it out here, go ahead and snap it. Okay, and we do the old count, 1,001, 1,002, ball's gone. Okay, so you probably didn't even have that ball in your hands from snap to fake to throw. It wasn't even a full two seconds. Okay, it's pretty hard to run five yards in less than two seconds. So you can see there they've got a pretty good mismatch, their D-line versus our O-line, but things still work out fine because we're getting the ball out so quick. We're going to have another bubble screen down here to the field. We're going to run the pop pass. You can see this is the second different kid you've seen do this, run the pop pass. Um, so it's obviously a bunch of different kids can do it. Okay, we're going to read that same guy. He either fills the box or he doesn't, and then we'll be able to make the decision where we want to go with this ball. Okay, so as we go ahead and play it through, that's a true zone play right there. We did not lock it. So we're reading that first linebacker inside. Remember, we're going to outside release. The linebacker covering the sniffer to try to turn his hips and then go inside. We're going to read the next linebacker inside. He steps to play run. Right now, the quarterback knows it's done. That's how easy that read is on that pop pass. As soon as that linebacker declares for the run, we're just going to go ahead and pull the ball and replace him right now. He can't get back there quickly enough um, to do anything with that route. So, again, this is a <clears> – I think this is a longer yardage play. You know, we're back there. I think we might be behind the chains. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're way behind the chains. So, that was – uh, looks like first and 20, I guess. Uh, we probably had a holding call, and they brought it all the way back. So you're throwing the ball again. Uh, we'll go play at full speed here and see. You're going to throw this ball three yards, it looks like, in front of the line of scrimmage. And that kid just went and got almost all that real estate. Okay, so again, that's a, that's a pretty high return on your investment for a pretty simple play. Uh, and the reason we got into it is we kind of self-scouted ourselves and realized that we weren't hitting the ball down the middle of the field enough. Uh, in 2015. So that was one of our ways to get it down the middle of the field was to run those seam pop passes. And it really became one of our better plays over the last two years. So we really, really started to hang our hat on. Yeah, that uh, you made some hay on that, man. But uh, yeah, a lot of coaches are, uh, you know, are trying to find different ways to uh, the tight end's probably been the most undervalued position player at all levels uh, until you get a Gronk or a Jason Witten. But uh, I liked your point. 
size and, and, and height, weight really doesn't matter. That kid can be so versatile. I think Oklahoma, number 36 for Oklahoma, if you get some Oklahoma film, mm -hmm. I, it, wasn't he that type of H-back, sniffer-back type guy? Well, you know, there's, there's absolutely no doubt. If you, have a, if you have a Rob Gronkowski, you've got a great situation uh, because you can split him out and you, know, you can flex him, you can bring him in the box. I mean, that guy can do everything. But the truth of the matter is most of us don't have that guy. And I think that has dissuaded people. I hear people all the time say, well, I don't have a true tight end guy, so I'm not going to do that. Well, make one. Um, take a kid. You saw one of my kids there is just a really good athlete with really good hands. Um, he can position block people. You're not going to split zone him onto a five technique 20 times a game but he can position block and do a pretty decent job there. And that's what a lot of division one programs have started to do is if they can't recruit exactly the guy they want, they recruit two that can come together or composite that tight end position. So I think it's just a matter, you know, in high school football, we're doing that all the time. Anyway, we're always taking guys that don't have the exact skill set you want. You teach them how to do enough things. You train them up to do it, do it the best they can. And then you utilize them and you make your scheme adjust to what you've got walking your hallways. I mean, that's, Obviously, we can't recruit, so that's what we have to do every fall. I, I think I think the whole system, the S2A system, is a recruiting tool. Um, so many guys, you know, you could have six options on any given play on some schemes that every kid is going to get the ball, and that's what kids want. Kids want to uh, make plays, and, and uh, you got kids walking the hall that play basketball on track that, that aren't playing football because they're, well – Times have changed. There's the, the old stock block and, and win one for the old Gipper and for the old blue and white and the alma mater <laughs> doesn't necessarily motivate anymore, does it? No. Well, and, and to your point, the tight end that we had this past year was a basketball player, and you know he barely caught the ball the year before I got here. Um, he was a 50-catch, 750-yard receiver for us last year, and he really – he could run a flat, he could run a pop, he could run a hitch. That's, that's about what he did. Um, but he was good at those things. He, he blocked pretty well, you know. So there's that, that's one of the big things, like you said, in the S2A is get a lot of different guys out there and, and use them in a, in a Swiss Army knife mentality where you teach them a bunch of different skills and just keep them on the field. Um, that's a big part of it. You got it, man. Hey, uh, give your Twitter handle in case somebody wants to hit you up and ask you a question. Yeah, the, uh, the general surface-to-air system is at S2, the number 2A system, and my personal one is at – Coach Hargit, H-A-R-G-I-T-T. -T. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, subscribe to us on the Coaching Process Wins YouTube channel, and, and you'll get notifications when we're going live. So, hey, Coach, over and out. Good job, man. Appreciate you, Coach. Have a good one. Bye.